And I feel like all the advice given is, even if it is, this is how I built my business three years ago. It's like, okay, great. Well, that's not gonna work now. Like things have changed that quickly on social media. I'd rather not take the cash. I would rather somebody come in that saves me for a year and gets me a result and gets me a referral. So they're going, well, how do I do it? I don't know. Because that's when it comes across robotic. It comes across like you don't care. You don't give a shit. There's no personality in your content because you don't know how to do it. So how do you expect someone else to be able to do that for you when you can't do it? If you are signing up to these people based off of what you believe they did within their fitness as an example of what you might want to achieve, look at what they actually did then. But what they're teaching you to do now is not what they did. So how are they adequately equipped to coach that? Why you shouldn't be getting leads with organic content, or should you? Oh, that's a hook, isn't it? Hello, guys. We're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter, formerly Bicep and Banter. Could be why you're here. Ages and ages ago. But um, we're, here to help long, you with, baby. we're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way we can. And today we're going to talk about this very... Uh, it came up this week, actually, in conversation. Me and Mike were just chatting about it. Um... Should you be listening to business mentors who actually don't get any leads from organic content? So it, it, it kind of came up the other, the other day because I was, I was seeing a bit of content and, and I see some mentors giving out advice around content, what you should be posting, what you shouldn't be posting, how to get leads from organic content. And then it dawned on me that actually that they get the majority of their leads for their programs through paid advertising. So should you listen to a mentor then who's given advice around organic content who doesn't actually know what's going on Instagram, doesn't actually know how to get those leads through the door and isn't in charge of their own DM inbox because their VAs are doing it for them in the Philippines? That's the kind of the, how this came up in conversation because I would bet a lot of you watching this don't have a budget to do paid advertising. You probably are looking to do more organic content and get leads through organic content and you don't want to send loads and loads of cold DMs. Well, that's what they do to get clients through the door. Guess who doesn't do that? We don't. Us. We don't do that. Yeah, look, um, the way that your mentor or a mentor gets you through the door, um, that's probably what they're going to be teaching. So if you want to learn about co um, cold outreach and you want to learn about Facebook ads, yeah, it could be a good shout. Like genuinely, like not even, you know, not even being facetious about that. Like that, that could be a good shout. But if you know that they're heavily reliant on that, um, the expect that to be the thing that they're teaching so if you're going in there expecting to learn about content maybe be prepared to be underwhelmed and don't listen to the advice that they're putting out on social media because not that they don't have the right to say it but all also but, but you kind of know the tactics that they they're using so they're not getting people that are maybe flocking to them for example and again we don't know the numbers we don't know the ins and the outs but it's just an interesting um point of view isn't it where they won't necessarily know what is working or what's not working in terms of organic content. And they certainly won't know what's working for you as the coach because they're not doing it anymore. They're not in the same boat as you anymore. They're teaching things. And this is this is another thing. They're teaching things that they didn't do in their fitness business now. So so I don't understand I don't understand how they can mentor people in in business. What they're doing is they're applying the principles that they're using as a mentor and then telling all of their coaches to do it. It's not the same thing. I wouldn't really be advising coaches to be doing something like this, yet there's now a big trend in people doing podcasts. I wouldn't really advise it, to be completely honest, because I don't know how many general population um, want to listen to another fitness podcast. If you're doing it, it needs to be very, very different. So it's like mentors are learning things as they're going and trying to implement new things with their coaches. What we do is we like to think we had a successful fitness business and still do. So teach that. And also as well, even if they, even if they did, you know, get clients into organic content previously, two, three years ago, they're not doing it now. And things have changed in two, three years so much. Whereas we still do all that stuff. We still check, you know, we're still doing our own emails. We're still doing our own content. We're noticing the trends around what's working in some stories, what's not, what's getting good engagement, what's not. Are there trends? Are the trends working? Are they not working? Should you focus on them? Should you not? And I feel like all the advice given is, even if it is, this is how I built my business three years ago. It's like, okay, well, great. Well, that's not going to work now. Like things have changed that quickly on social media. Um, and then like you said, there's also, there's other people who are also going, um, okay, this is, this is what you need to do in your fitness business. Then they didn't do that. And some of the principles that they're using, they just never did that. Oh, you can't do monthly recurring. Well, that's how you did it two, three years ago. That's prime example. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, you did it. You built your whole business on that. Oh, you can't, it doesn't work. You have to do it up front. Well, yeah, because it benefits you now, doesn't it? To say charge up front because it makes you look better. 
And that's why they're doing it. And again, there's this selfish element to it. Whereas we don't, again, what's the kickback from us going, well, yeah, you should make more organic content. Not, you don't know how to do paid ads. You need to come work with me so that you can, I can teach you how to do it. We're sitting there going, well, look, organic content's way forward. Like, yeah, we can teach you to be yourself more, but ultimately that's still what we'd recommend. It's still what got us to where we are. And it's still what's getting us to where we are now. And it's still working. We are, we're not jumping on paid ads, ads all of a sudden doing what we're doing now. It still works. The thing is, is that if you focus on organic content, um, you can't lose over time is what I will say is because you will have learned how to do it. You'll have learned how to demonstrate personality on video. You'll have learned how to demonstrate personality within copy. You will have learned how to get leads through being yourself and creating the content that you're wanting to, to, to create. If you go down the route of, I'm going to learn how to do cold DMs, not much to learn, but you know, let's just say that you do. Copy paste, that's that. Yeah. That's easy. Um, and Instagram in three months time changes the function where you can't now speak to somebody um, on Instagram unless they're following you. Well, that's that tactic gone. If um, Facebook ads um, engagement decreases um, over time or they make the, the, the cost per click um, higher or whatever it is that they bring in, again, you're at kind of mercy of, 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 of those kinds of things. And again, it only works until it works. And from our experience with Facebook ads, it may well get some people through the door. But again, when we talk about how to build a successful long-term fitness business, it probably isn't through people who have been brought in from cold methods because they don't know about your brand. They don't know you. They don't really have a connection to you. They haven't sat there for three, four, five, six months consuming your content, making their mind up, coming to the decision them, themselves. They've been kind of strong-armed in by this funnel or that funnel um, and this sales tactic. They come in, they do a couple of months and they drop off. Now, some people might argue, yeah, but you've got the cash for that. I would argue the opposite. Cash banked. Yeah, cash collected. Um, I would argue the opposite and go, I'd rather not take the cash. I would rather um, somebody come in that stays with me for a year and gets me a result and gets me a referral. Um, that's what I would, rather than just churn through volume of people. Can't be very fulfilling in your fitness um, job. And again, as a knock on to that, um, that's why they're then saying you should outsource your coaching. You shouldn't be doing that either. So essentially what you're going to be doing is you're going to have coaches at work underneath you. You're going to be doing high amounts of cold um, um, lead generation, be it DMs and Facebook ads. You're getting poorly qualified leads that are coming into your other coaches, dropping off in two or three months. No real results coming through the bland, uh, brand. You may well be seeing some spikes in income on a revenue basis. Net profit will be diluted because of the, the your outsourcing plus the expense on the ads. I just don't see it as a long-term sustainable business for the majority of coaches. Am I saying that every single, like nobody will make a, a living out of that or a success out of that? No, that's not what I'm saying. But if we're talking about trends, which you, we, you probably should do um, and talk about a, as a rough generality because there are always going to be outliers with something. Um, just like when you guys talk about uh, you, you shouldn't go keto. Okay, if you're epileptic, maybe you should. So that's an outlier. Same thing. There are going to be some people that do very, very well for that. But for the large percentage population of coaches, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be getting better at organic content creation. And also in that scenario, you're no longer a coach. You're an agency owner. Yeah. You're basically shelling out money for paid ads and you're outsourcing that work to coaches that are doing the work and you're taking a cut effectively. You just become an agency owner. And most coaches I know get into this because they love coaching, love helping people. Like that's the one thing that we always used to enjoy was getting people in shape having that message to go, you've changed my life. I feel amazing about myself and all this sort of stuff. That's what most coaches want to achieve. In the scenario that Mike's just laid out there, you're not getting those results. You're not getting the benefit. You're not coaching these people, right? And that's because you're not doing it organically. If you're doing it organically, you build better relationships with people. They come into coaching in a better headspace. They get your result. You don't need as many clients. So like through the paid method, you probably need, I, again, I, I wouldn't know the exact number, but I would say probably four to five times the amount of clients. Over, over a five year period because there's that much churn. There is that much to get through. You're gonna have to do much, uh, so many more calls because the closing rate is gonna be worse because they're cold. It's gonna be upfront cost usually because it has to, because the way the ads work, you have to charge upfront because otherwise you lose so much money on them. You're gonna have to sign up loads more clients and go through that whole process. And I don't think that's what coaches got in this industry for. I don't think that's what coaches do this job for. I think they do it because they want to change people's lives. They want to help them. And what we're saying is that you'll have a better chance of doing that in the long term, a more fulfilling job, a more fulfilling career, more fulfilling results by posting organic 
content that speaks to people on a human level versus looking at cost per lead, cost per acquisition, upfront sale, retention rate, customer lifetime value, and outsourcing work to other coaches and having to manage that team of coaches and fix the problems in that funnel, basically. And believe me, when you start hiring staff, your problems just are magnified massively. And you just become a manager of people and not an actual coach, which is, I would argue, probably what you got in this industry for. It goes back to the first point that I made where um, mentors are trying to tell their coaches to do the same thing as they're doing. So a mentor or a lot of mentors at the moment have become agencies. It's all, we've got a marketing guy, we've got a sales guy, we've got these VAs, we've got that. And they're essentially agencies. And that's what they're now teaching because that's what they're, it, it's almost, it's it's so, um, it, it's the same as when, you know, like we used to have a bit of a bugbear where, let's just say if we're coaches and we started to train in a different way, that you give all your clients yeah. the same yeah, training yeah. plan. It, we start tracking our blood glucose, everyone starts tracking it. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's it. That That's what we used to kind of like make a joke out of before is that it's so fickle that just because I'm doing something, I now add that into all everybody else I'm working with. It shouldn't work like that. But that's what mentors do, is that they are becoming agencies because that's the best way to scale for them. But they they didn't do that as coaches. Some of those mentors didn't employ any coaches or didn't employ any staff when they were in the fitness business. So if you are signing up to these people based off of what you believe they did within their fitness business as, a, as an example of what you might want to achieve, look at what they actually did then. And that's cool. But what they're teaching you to do now is not what they did. So how are they adequately equipped to be able to to, 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 to coach that? I, I know of one scenario where one mentor had never employed staff. He gave the advice to one of his clients of, I don't really know what split to suggest. So let's start with this. Let's trial that and see how it goes. Is that mentoring? Is that having pr previous experience and knowing what to do and, and confidently being able to coach? And somebody's paying for that advice. Well, I don't, I've never really employed somebody, so let's just try this. Like, surely the person that you're trusting to give you business advice has actually done the things that you you want to do. Um, so it's just bizarre that it's just, again, this, this whole thing of teaching what they're doing currently. What they're doing currently doesn't work for a coach. And also, on that point, what you said earlier, it's like... Um, you got into this for coaching. What winds me up about mentors is that you'll see the same mentors go, you need to outsource your work because you can spend more time doing the stuff that you love, coaching. And the same mentor saying, here's why you should use red light, green light, traffic light systems because you don't want to spend all your time doing check-ins. So which is it then? So which is it? You're telling people what they want to hear so that they pay you cash. Which is it? Do you have a clear idea of what you're telling your coaches to do or are you just making sound bites that sound sexy you don't want to spend all your time coaching so all of this um these check-ins for the people that do want to spend the time coaching i'm going to tell them to outsource you want to spend like it, it it's all over the shop yeah and and, and again that they're telling you to outsource jobs that you don't know how to do yourself. So you're just going to be in the same position that that mentor's in, like Mike just described there, where that mentor's like, oh, well, you need to employ someone. I don't know. I've never employed someone. So what's the split going to be? It's like you hiring a VA and go, well, I've never sent cold DMs. So I don't know what to do. So do that. It's not going to, it's never going to work, is it? Or, oh, I don't know how to coach that person, but yeah, you do it. You, I'll outsource that. I don't know how to edit these videos, but yeah, you do it. I don't know how to do this, but you do it. I don't know what I'm looking for. I don't even know. Like, it's not going to work, is it? Like, that's why everything that we've done, and we'll probably get slagged off for saying, like, we do too much within our business and we should have outsourced certain things at certain times. Yeah, maybe we should have, right? But we had this chat just before we came in here. Like, I don't trust anyone to do it as well as I can. And I can do it quicker, I can do it better, and I know it's going to be completely on brand when we do it. So if we're going to outsource anything, it has to be done to that level. If it can't be, we'll just take that control back. No problem. I've got no problem doing that. Just work more hours. And not enough coaches have their own style, their own branding to be able to give it to a video editor or to be able to give it to someone to do a VA to, to speak like them in the DMs because they can't do it themselves yet. So they're going, well, how do I do it? I don't know. Because that's when it comes across robotic. It comes across like you don't care. You don't give a shit. There's no personality in your content because you don't know how to do it. So how do you expect someone else to be able to do that for you when you can't do it? And again, I come back to like, we are sitting here now doing what we do, seven-figure business, and we do the majority of the tasks ourselves because we are still the best ones to do it because it's our brand, it's our personality. We do a lot of organic content. Guess who's best best place to do that for us? Ourselves, because it's our content. It's what we do. And that's the thing I want to stress from it all is just make sure that you're following and listening to the right people and you're not just being sucked in by 
X amount of money per month collected. Like I just said, well, yeah, run some paid ads, spend two grand a month on some paid ads. You'll probably make three grand back if it's a half decent written bit of copy. But all of this stuff, again, is a templated ad, templated copy that works for a month. Then it's reached a certain amount of audience. It's not going to work anymore. So you go to your mentor, can I have a new bit of copy for my email ad? Yeah, there you go. I'm not being funny, but that's not hard. That's not hard. Just maths, basic maths. Spend a, you spend do the maths. Spend, you do the maths. 50 times zero is 50. 50. Um, so... <laughs> I'm going to get going. Um, times it by 12. Times it by 12. technically there's 12 months <laughs> in a year. Unless it's sleep year and then of course it's 13. Go watch a bit of content yeah. on that. Um, but do, I, does that make sense? Maybe that makes sense. But that's my point is that it's like you're the best, you're the, you're the best place to do it. You have to be very, very good at that role to you know what you want to get, to know what you want to do out of it, to then outsource it to someone. You don't need to. It's a nice look should have. Anyway, we'll leave it there. There you go. So um, if, you, if you like that video, then do it. Like it. Fucking hell. What more do we need? Um, come and say hello on Instagram. And if, you're, if you're not already subscribed to the channel um, and you thought that that was a half decent bang average video, then um, maybe give it a subscribe um, for nothing other than pity. Yeah, because we've noticed that 95% of people who uh, watch these videos aren't subscribed. Yeah. So we want to get that down to 94%. Because yeah. that would mean a lot to us. It would mean so much to us. Wouldn't it, and, Stephen? You know... Um, only if you do that, am I going to continue to get better guests on? Uh, no, you're going to do. You're going, you're going to get, get better uh, guests on anyway, aren't you? So, you know, so yeah. not much of a bribe, is it? But don't watch it over here. Don't need to. Catch you a bit.